Hey, what's up everyone? This is Peter Anun, and today's tutorial is going to be continuing on to the wall dodge. Now, this wall dodge makes a great addition to the wall running mechanics that we've already implemented. And so, as you can see here, you, you do a jump. It checks if you can jump. If you can't jump, it will do the first trace. It does some calculations to make a reflection or make that uh, make that vector reflect off of the surface that it impacted and then send that second trace. This will initiate the first trace. But we want to first do one thing before that. We want to make sure that this is only being called when you're off the ground. So can jump. And then we're going to pull this to false. To a single line trace by channel. Now the start position would be the actor's position. What you want to do here now is get the actor's location. No, rotation. Get the actor's rotation. Break this. And we only want the yaw. So I'm going to make a rock. And only drag over yaw. I want to get the forward vector. And then multiply this by 100,000. Now, after I multiply this by 100,000, it's going to give me the length that I want. So then I drag this to the end of that first trace. Now, in here, I want to make sure trace complex is on. And if you want, just for testing purposes, turn to four duration. So now let's break the out hit. And we're going to send the second trace. So let's actually do a branch. First, we're going to get the location that it hit plus another vector then, we, then from here we can do the single trace so if it's true single line trace by channel and this will be the start so what we want to do is get the impact normal and do mirror vector by normal And this is what creates that reflection effect. We want to get forward actor, I mean get actor forward vector, and connect that to the end vect. Then we want to normalize this and multiply it by a hundred thousand, hundred thousand million, hundred thousand million. Okay. Now this is what will be added to that first edition vector that we created when I, after the break hit result. And so another thing we want to calculate is the length between the start location and the actor's location now. So from here we want to do vector minus. Let's pull this up. And the other location we're minusing, subtracting from. It's a like this our uh, our location. Then we do vector length. And we're gonna check if this is less than four fifty. Now 
This is really not the only check. But for now, we're going to use that. And before we get in game, make sure you have trace channel, on visibility, trace complex, enabled, and duration for the draw debug type. And do the same thing for the other trace as well. Visibility, complex, and for duration. And if you check that out in game, you see that they bounce off the wall. All right. So what's to do now is to add more filters on the traces that we allow through. So one thing I like to do is that I break this output right here. I get the absolute for the Y and the X. And I check that as 0.97. Now to check all of these conditions, make sure that they are true, I do end, and I add a pen. So now it checks the angle that they are at, as well as the condition of the length. And then we apply that to that last branch. And now we need to break this last hit and collect the results from this to determine which way the player should face. So the first thing we want to do is get the actor's location. We're going to use these two variables twice. One we want to do find look at location. Start would be the character, of course. The target would be the location. Now we also want to subtract these vectors from each other and get the length between these two vectors. And so our first boolean would be to make sure that the length of the second trace is at least 100 units. Another thing we want to do is after we get the find that look at rotation, we want to set the rotation. So let's get the controller player controller and we're going to get control rotation but we're also going to set control rotation so in the branch true we want to set rotation to our find out look rotation but then we also want to check to make sure that so as long as this rotation is not equal to the rotation that we want it to be loop and then launch the character. So now, in order to get, to get the velocity that we need the character to go in, we use the rotation that we're rotating them in, and then we get the forward vector. Next thing we want to do is get the velocity. With the velocity, now we can determine how fast the character should be moving once we apply this new force. So get the vector link. 
we're going to increase that speed by multiplying by float. And then we're going to multiply the forward vector by the float. Now this will be applied to launch velocity. Now we're going to override the x and y in the z so that this replaces the velocity that was previously put over the character. So now we have this whole thingamajig hooked up and we're going crazy, going crazy, yeah. All right, so anyway, let's save this and try it. You notice it just throws you in that direction. Use the little jump and a push. Yeah. And that's how you kill the man. So there you go, guys. That is the entire war dodge. It's been spruced up a little bit. And it works. It works nicely, war dodge. And it works well with all the other systems or mechanics that I've shown you. So whichever one you decide to keep and lose or add on to, hopefully this can... Hope expand on what you've tried. And alright guys, peace.